Yeah. All right, welcome to Old School Jank. You can Ben with you guys. Um, brought to you by shoptyt.com, where you can get this shirt. Have at it, Hoss. Okay, you gotta, uh, I gotta puff up my chest so you can see it. When I let my gut down, it goes like this and you can't see it. All right, anyways. Uh, Young Turks, this is another one. I do that. Okay. You know where this, oh, look at this. You got your shirt? I got my shirt, yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. FDR, resist. Resist, yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I, I don't know what you think about impeachment, but after Hoyer and Pelosi, like now I'm like, oh, resist. <laughs> anyway, but they are up at shoptyt.com. Um, and the uh, uh, policy is, uh, I mean, I'm with you, but she, she moved a little. Yeah, you know why she moved? Yeah, of course. The same reason everybody moves. The uh, execution of political pressure. Huh. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you saw the article. I'm sorry, part. in her heart. <laughs> so we'll start with a little bit of politics, and we're gonna get. Uh, we'll do some fun. Um, uh, like, I have these uh, questions uh, that I always wonder. Like, what do you do with your sweaty clothes? We'll get back to that. Hipster or homeless? We'll get back to that. Uh, but uh, it's, I, I'm bothered by this. I was on the cruise uh, on a vacation for a week. When a lot of that stuff was happening, so I didn't get to vent yet. Um, uh, I vented a little bit on the, the last episode of Aggressive Progressives, but uh, so it, Politico magazine had an article that came out today about the Intercept, and the guy who wrote it is a good guy, and he's mainly like uh, explaining what Washington thinks, right? And uh, who and wrote it? What's his uh, name? I think Stephen uh, Perlberg, uh, and he used to be at BuzzFeed. Now he's doing freelancing, and he did this one for Politico magazine. And he was at Wall Street Journal before. Anyway, so, and um, and he talked to me uh, about the article too, and I just one quote from me in it. Uh, I think it's the only quote that is unmitigatedly positive <laughs> about the Intercept. Uh, everybody else is like, either we hate them, they're the worst of the worst, or, uh, well, they have some upsides, but they also suck, <laughs> right? And so, why? Um, well, he quoted Democratic consultants. That makes sense. Uh, they're because the Intercept covers a lot of stories uh, about progressives, and they also uncover uh, corruption in the Democratic Party. Yeah, they're fairly hostile to the to the Democratic Party. Yeah, yeah. they're there because they're watchdogs, uh, and it's it's not because they're Republicans, <laughs> right? And they don't come at it from the right wing perspective, which is I don't know. Let's make up. Right? <laughs> they don't do that at all. They, they're fact based, they uncover memos, documents, etc. Right? And, um, and so the consultants don't like them because they're part of the establishment and, and the intercept is um, revealing things about them. Uh, totally get it. Totally get it. There's also, a, you're leaving out the personality issue. Um, you mean with Greenwald? Yeah, they or? don't like Glenn. And, and, That's and, true, and, they, and, and they have some they have some reason not to like him. He is, I mean, he is deliberately provocative and in their face and calls them names and is not just doing journalism. Just I'm not knocking any of the pieces or any of the people who work there. So if Glenn Greenwald were not associated with the intercept, there would be far less consternation about the work of the intercept. I hear what you're saying, and that sounds 100% right, except that this um, article's focus was on their political coverage, which Glenn is not really part of. I got it, but it, it's why they are already whipped up about it. I'm not saying this I, article I, wouldn't exist, it might well. Um, yeah, yeah, so and, and the main character they were focusing on was actually Ryan Grimm, who I think is not only a great reporter, I might go as, I mean, look, it's, I might go as far as saying he's the best reporter or editor in DC. A reporter, that's a really crowded field, and there's some wonderful reporters, including other people at the Intercept, like James Risen, who was at the New York Times and broke some of the most important stories of the last 10, 20 years. But, but as far as editors go, yeah, I, I definitely got Ryan at number one. And um, but so they were they were focused on that. And in, in this case, they mentioned Glenn Greenwald and kind of what you're alluding to, Ben. But they were mainly uh, mad at, at at their political coverage led by Ryan, and because they keep exposing what the DCCC is doing, sending out a memo saying don't attack Democrats, for example, in primaries, and then then they show the DCCC attacking a Democrat in a primary. 
Well, that's 100% true. And it nails on a chalkboard in Washington. Why don't you just let us be hypocrites? God damn it, you're ruining unity. Well, that's not his goddamn job, right? That his job is to do reporting. And so, uh, so the consultants I get, but a lot of the media is just like, mm, mm, I don't like that. Why not? Why not? Why is it your job to defend the Democratic Party? I just, I don't. I don't know, but that suggests that the media thinks that their job is to defend the Democratic Party, and I know that's not true. So, oh, they hate. Pro no, so this is where we're okay. going to disagree. Well, yeah. I mean, I got They hate like, progressives. No, they yeah. don't hate progressives. You, you sound crazy, and you. you but, and but are you kidding me? The other today, John was talking about how Chris Lizza wrote a piece uh, saying Bernie Sanders is a front runner, mm -hmm. and he's like, he had to read it twice because he's like, this sounds positive, and like we. Like, can't believe our eyes. It's like literally like the first positive article about Bernie Sanders that, that we can point to. Like, because well, we're first not the first article about Bernie Sanders from, from Chris Siliza? Yeah. Washington Post, uh, That's mainstream That's media. That's an insane thing to say. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, your, your brain is misfiring on how you read stuff. You read the negative stuff, you think the world is centered around. You're, you're wrong, and you sound dumb. And it, it's the <laughs> dumbest you've ever sounded. And it's a totally repeat wrong. of the dumbness from 2016. You have their- I mean, We were 100% right. <laughs> what, what, that the media- like the, the, the media the, hated Bernie Sanders? Yes, and, and, and then <laughs> so that, like the media hated Donald Trump, and yet Donald Trump used it to victory, Bernie Sanders didn't. I don't think the media, so- yeah, yeah, but they gave Donald Trump a billion dollars while uh, in free media while hating him. Bernie and Sanders again, okay, Sanders. Uh, uh, you know, no one on the Sunday shows more. None, no one, he won, most frequent guest on the Sunday show. No one on the network news less. Yeah, and then one second from now, you'll be like the network news doesn't matter, nobody pays attention. I'm the one who argues that the network news matters. Uh, and, 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 and by the way, in the, in the campaign, of course, the network news massively covered his opponent negatively, Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton, unbelievably. So yeah, I, no, but that's what I'm saying, Ben. I'm not biased. Did, did the did the press and the media were they tough on Hillary Clinton? Absolutely, yes. They were, and uh, you know, Bernie was right when he said enough about the damn emails, right? And they did. They help Republicans with their framing and their talking points, and they're not doing it consciously. They're not like, let's help Republicans, right? But yeah, they battered Hillary Clinton on some stuff that mattered and some stuff that didn't. And then that, and then, but on the stuff that I think is way more important, uh, they so there was some good reporting. New York Times did some good reporting on the Clinton Foundation, but largely was like considered Reeve Ghosh, like oh, yeah, don't talk about the foundation. That's uncomfortable, right? Considered like, by whom? Uh, they, they barely touched it. I mean, the foundation stuff was so much more important than the emails. Uh, but so my thesis on that is that the foundation goes to the corruption that Washington is built on. Saudi Arabia gives money to the Clinton Foundation and they hire all these people who work in Washington, right? And that's how Washington goes around. So yeah, it's uncomfortable. I, Emails, I, nobody else has a private server. Let's go f her up. <laughs> I got it, but that's what the Republicans were talking about. The, 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 those there were there were I, I read and you read some including one You'll remember it better, but I mean, including one ten thousand word piece on the on yeah, the, that's the one I'm referring to. It was yeah. great reporting. Yeah, so and nobody cared much, right? I mean, you mm -hmm. want a process story about how Washington works, and Americans aren't that interested in that. Doesn't mean you should stop talking about it, and trying to fix it, but it is a much tougher sell. Nah, so here's what could have happened, right? And and then people would have cared. Um, and so. Why is Saudi Arabia giving, I don't remember the numbers now, but 10 million, 20 million to the Clinton Foundation? Because they really care about human rights. Uh, they care about health care in America or Uganda or wherever the Clinton Foundation was doing health care. Um, no way. They're obviously, obviously buying influence, and the Clintons are letting them. And but that's very uncomfortable. So that's I remember Anderson Cooper saying it in one of the debates to Bernie Sanders. Are you saying that this that the money that they raised in that case it wasn't the foundation? You're talking about the donor money might have affected her vote. Are you saying that? Like, yeah. I mean, Bernie didn't say because he's too damn polite. But yeah, of course, of course, it affected her vote. But that's the core of Washington. It's it's built on corruption. Yes, the money affects their votes. Yes, 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 yes. And that's Reeve Ghosh. That's, I mean, how often do you see that? You almost never see that written. It affects their votes.
I got it, you've been saying it for 15 years and, and everybody else has and part of the, and everybody else associated here has and it, it's, it's largely true. It is a little screaming into the wind and I am not gonna participate and I resent your participation in and everybody else's participation here in this sort of generic ripping like the right wingers do of the media and it's horse crap. And mm -hmm. yeah, Bernie Sanders does not get covered and progressives don't get covered the same way. They don't because they are attempting to shock the system, deliver a massive change to the system and, and, and the system resists that. But again, you take this incredibly nuanced issue and present it always in these incredibly- 100% simple wrong. No, uh, you're fact, right, you present fact, it simplistically fact, as fact, the press fact, hates that's progressives. That's exactly what I'm doing is nuance. No, you're so not. What was, so the right wing says, oh, the media is all involved in a conspiracy where they all talk to each other and make up stories. See, that's not nuanced, that's, you're an idiot if you believe that, right? Mm -hmm. What's nuanced is, um, no, the media, is trying to, in their mind, do the right thing. There's no global conspiracy, there's no smoke filled rooms, but there is a certain group think in Washington and that group think it influences things. That doesn't mean we should get rid of the media, that doesn't mean they're the enemy of the people. It means we should work hard at trying to fix the media. That's a nuanced position. That's not the position you started this conversation with. And, no, and but, they, but, it, but they are biased, so the bias is the group think. All right, but then again, that's, it is, that's different from what you said. It's different from many of your tweets. No, but it's, it's, different no, from it's the, not, no, it's not. Yes, it, it is. Their, their bias is against progressives. They, so the only thing is I'll, I'll withdraw and I do, I make this mistake often, is I use the word hate like they hate Bernie Sanders or they hate progressives. I can't help but say that, it's not really accurate. They largely have disdain for them. They don't believe in anything they, they believe. They think it's radical, extreme, and they have alternative facts where they believe that the polling isn't real. In reality, the American people love progressive, progressive positions. That's based on polling. And almost every mainstream journalist write it, writes it as radical, extreme, left wing, etc. I don't know about almost every, but some do. A lot do, Ben. You know that. I do know, but again, I don't I don't I, I don't think I think almost every is careless. No. Nah. I don't think so. I, I, you know, what are we gonna, we're gonna, we can make up numbers, eighty percent, ninety percent, but it ain't fifty-one percent and it ain't thirteen percent. Uh, so a huge percentage of them assume that progressives are wrong because they live in Washington and they, and groupthink in Washington is this is a center-right country and the right wing is always right. right. And 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 part of the reason they think that and and might say it and it's not eighty or ninety percent. That's as wrong as fifty-one percent. It's closer to fifty-one percent, maybe under fifty-one percent. Especially now because there has been a massive change, partly driven, enormously driven by Bernie Sanders, then partly driven by this show, people like you, mostly you of the people like you, uh, of which you should take enormous uh, pride and credit in. Um, so that it doesn't happen as much. If you think it happens as much, you are literally, I, I mean, I think that you are biased. I think very strongly that you have become jaded by the, by the same rules that apply to them, by what you, the manner in which you take in news. So the way Bernie Sanders is referred to and those policies is referred to has changed completely in four years, massively in four years. Not to your satisfaction and probably not to a satisfying degree of satisfaction. But of course it's changed. Um, and part of the reason, now I'll back up your point, that the press in the big picture press thought that those ideas were radical was because both political parties told them that it was radical. You see, that's a great point, okay? And that's why I can't stand the Democratic leadership and the media kisses their ass. Oh, well, Nancy Pelosi said it. I got so. it, but but it's- they are trained to believe it's not that in that manner of that sort of well Nancy Pelosi said and I'm a moron so I'm going to report it. That's no, but they are trained. You get two sides of the story: not progressives and conservatives, not populist versus establishment. That's right. The two sides are Republican Party leadership and Democratic Party leadership, which generally agree on most policies. Well, I, I disagree vehemently on that. No, but, again, but, that's way too simplistic. But, but, but there is, but a, they certainly agree on economic policies. That are to the benefit of their donors. They have, um, for, you know, the Republicans seem to have be leaving that compact. <laughs> um, yeah, with Trump. Yep. Yeah. Um, so and, Partly, and, and but but and, also going more towards it in other ways. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but when there is not the when you are grew up in an era of you cover both sides and you have people who don't like each other and generally don't get along, Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell. And they both say that free college 
It's right. radical. Mm -hmm. Well, then that will frame you for saying that's radical. Totally. Um, yeah, that, that's true, and that's why it's not a conspiracy. That's why it's groupthink. Okay, I just, but then you've said again, you then. But it does lead to bias, though. Okay, it, yes, it leads to a bias. Yeah, it leads. It le leads to a very natural bias against progressives. Yes, that's right, and 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 that's a that that is a fair point. But also, by that same token, when you imitate somebody's voice, Nancy Pelosi told me, don't pretend that you're not saying that person's not a moron. That's what red voice means. <laughs> that's the point I, of people I do making believe that. They're not doing their job right. That's true. Yeah, right. and and yeah. I guess so. You know, to come all the way back around to Politico, Politico's article, um, and, and this comes back to my wife's point, which I uh, I've said a couple of times now, which is that I shouldn't be surprised when they fight us, right? Because we're fighting them, and so uh, you say I'm biased in this regard. Uh, of course, I, since I'm me, I don't think I am. I don't and think. Hold on, I want to read before you go on. Just I, I, I don't think you're biased. That's why I used the wrong word. I, I, I think you are far too narrowly assessing the press, um, mm -hmm. and that you clearly, to me, have a propensity to see and react emotionally. To stories that negatively impact. Well, I'll tell you why. And so, yeah, look, I, everybody I, knows, and we couldn't be more upfront. We're home of progressives. We have a perspective that's different than being biased. So, the example I go to <laughs> often is, uh, you know, I thought Trump had a deep, uh, pretty good chance of winning. Um, at different times, I thought I was very clear throughout that he was going to win the Republican nomination. Even though he's my second least favorite candidate for a long time, eventually was my least favorite candidate. Who was your least favorite? Ted Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> and so I hated him, but I thought he was gonna win the Republican nomination. I hated him, but I thought he had a very good chance of winning the presidency. So I, I'm not letting my emotions get in the way of my analysis in that regard. No, and I, there are zillions of times where you don't let your emotions get right. in the way. Right, and in this case, if that happens at all, I, I don't think it's happening, but I, I certainly see your point. That, that I am more emotional about it, right? And that's true, I hope it's not clouding my judgment and my analysis. But the reason I get emotional about it is because they've been punching us in the face for 20 straight years. So it's like that scene out of anger management where they're telling Adam Sandler, sir. Just calm down. Right? Please calm down, right. I, I am calm. <laughs> right. Well, now I'm not calm, now I'm not calm, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're a radical extremist, yeah, 70% of the country agrees with you, but you're a piece of shit, and you have no chance of ever winning, and these policies will never happen, and these policies suck, and they're radical, and they're extreme. Hey, what are you getting all upset about, right? And then when I get upset, then they're like, okay, then I definitely hate this guy, because he's saying I'm a journalist, and this is my life. Right? Fighting for change is super hard, and 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 I agree. I mean, the, the, to some extent, that that analogy is uh, true. But it's but you have a tendency to think it's everyone because you, I think, because you so intensely focused on when it happens. Yeah. Um, so on but you, do you think the conversation has changed in four years? Yeah, but uh, it, in a slightly different way than you think it's changed. I'll get to that in a second. But and we are in a second. You know, normally old school is less political, more personal. We're actually going to get this is going to accidentally wind up at a great uh, epiphany I had, which are always fun. Okay, on the cruise that I went to. Um, went so on uh, the cruise I was on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, okay, right. I suppose that's true. Yeah. Okay, grammar police over here. <laughs> okay, see biased against me. Okay. Anyway, uh, so but I I had Dana Milbank on the show earlier this week from the Washington Post. He wrote uh, this super. The article, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, the tr uh, Trump of the left, okay? And I railed against it uh, a couple weeks ago when it came out. Um, but he was intellectually curious enough, interesting enough, uh, yeah. etc., to come on the show to talk about it. Right. And I know Dana a little bit from the MSNBC days and when he was my guest a couple of times on, on that show. And then, um, so, and then when we talked, it was much calmer. And it was back and forth, and we understood each other, and and I think that he conceded a lot of the points, and I think that he he in his mind wasn't thinking I hate Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the same thing as Donald Trump, but I think that it came off that he was saying eighty percent that Bernie Sanders is like Donald Trump, and I don't I think know. Think it came off in the piece or in, in the piece? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. yeah. And so, okay, that's the conversation you want to happen mm -hmm. instead of me railing against the piece. 
But I think both have a place, right? I think both have a place too. I mean, I've had a thousand, con calm the hyperbole down. I've had 135 conversations over my life of about you. I've had, I've had a thousand conversations about you. I've had 135 of the conversations I'm about to describe where people say, I think he's too angry. And, uh -huh. and I go, yeah, he's angry. I got frustrated a lot because sometimes I thought the anger was misplaced and I don't want to sit next to somebody who's yelling and it's not, I'm not into it. Um, that's totally wrong, man. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and then I and then I say, I got to tell you, uh, thank God somebody's angry. Um, and you know, I don't think he's ever uh, uh, out of line, and I don't think he's ever, you know, he's never deliberately cruel, and he never deliberately gets something wrong to suit his purpose. He's pissed. And we should be pissed. And part of why things have turned is because guys like Jenk were pissed. So it's okay. Yeah. Um, and, and so, uh, so anyway, that to that, yeah. Thank there, you there's for a, saying that. There, but, so look, and and to the po point of non-bias. Um, quick aside here. Look, I'm starting to get pissed at the Democratic, uh, progressive, uh, people running for uh, president. When are we going to talk about money and politics? I mean, that's why I'm. Uh, I like Elizabeth Warren. She's at least got really great proposals, and she's pressing on it. You know, if she would just stop talking about impeachment, she could make three or four concrete policy proposals a day instead of one or two. <laughs> um, uh, right, I mean, what a, she put that uh, that idea of you can't talk about impeachment and do policy at the same time. Uh, she, she, she was talking she, about policy six minutes later. That's right, yeah. I mean, how hard was that? It wasn't and, hard and at she all. she was talking she, about policy in a narrow way and a big way. Yeah, and, and that, so that shows that that talking point is total nonsense. Uh, that oh, you can only do one at a time. The other talking point that uh, that Buttigieg now has is if you talk about policy, you can't talk about values. Except Elizabeth Warren does all the time. So does Bernie in that case. Talks about policies and values. Well, that wasn't that hard. Okay, well, what's the hard part? Yeah. So that's that means you're just trying to hide your policies or don't have them. Okay, let's just keep it real. Uh, so anyway, but look, uh, they got to talk about money and politics more because you're not going to get this done if you don't get money out of politics. So uh, it, so I deeply respect Bernie Sanders. Um, I'm not sure AOC is talking enough about money and politics. And and obviously I, I you know I'm <laughs> couldn't be a bigger fan of AOC, right? Well, I would tell you, you know, that to, to that I'm sure you're right uh, that they're not cuz I haven't really heard them much. Um, and obviously the country is strongly in favor of it. I don't know, you know, again, even if you'd say that 88 or whatever it is or 78 or whatever the high percentage of people who want to get money out of politics, you know, uh, the uh, high percentage of people want, uh, you know, uh, uh, babies to live a long, fruitful life, but it doesn't mean you campaign on it and get anywhere. Right, I mean, they're they're not. Although with Medicare for all, you might. <laughs> well, no, no, that doesn't mean I'm not I'm not I'm not leaving out. Right, there there are policies that, that do. But you know, I was kidding. But there is actually um, uh, some truth to that in that it depends on your framing. Okay, so if right. you say, hey, I'm going to talk about the minutia of money and politics. Okay, then you might have a point. But if you if you say, hey, you know what, I want to end the corruption. Oh, that's going to do gangbusters. Yeah, that's right. Talking about ending corruption and making money in politics uh, the number one point of ending corruption. Uh, uh, th that's big, but it, but it, it is confusing to people. They don't really know what it means, right? Mm -hmm. Does it mean there's no money in politics? Does it mean no? That? No, it's 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 not at all. I, in my opinion, it's not at all confusing. I that's why I'm more annoyed at Bernie because he's the only one who can do this and would do this, but he's not yet doing it. Even Elizabeth Warren has a little bit of trouble doing this because she's a nice person. Um, you have to call it what it is. You have to say, yeah, my colleagues who. Are influenced by the donor money that they get, and that's a super hard thing to say. Yeah, it, that may be. I, I, I mean, it's it's hard. I, I don't know whether it, how effective it would be, but that's not even my point. We need, no, you, don't, look, I'll just tell you this, Ben. I, if you say to people, do you think the millions of dollars politicians take affect their votes? Yeah, everybody else. Ninety nine point nine percent of people are going to say, yeah, of course, of course, of course, it affects their votes. That's right. So, and that would be an enormous. And you know what? I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it. Look, Ojeda. It's not the right policy, uh, the amendment's the right policy. But when I asked him about money and politics, he said, yeah, I put a body cam on lobbyists. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great that's line. That's a great line, that's a great framing, that's how you yeah, talk yeah, about it. Sure, 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 I, I got you. And, 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 and they're not gonna talk about it enough to your satisfaction. Hopefully, they will talk about it more. You probably need, <laughs> the crazy thing is I'm gonna say, you probably need a scandal. I mean, the scandal mm -hmm. is 
every day, right? You know, it's hard <laughs> yeah, to say. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the scandal yeah, would be. Yeah, because, I got a scandal, Washington. But the cancer, <laughs> because it got so easy that there literally is no scandal. Like, you, mm -hmm. you can give the money and then you get a seat at the table, you know, and you know how much I like talking about seats at the table. So, mm -hmm. uh, but what I was really gonna say is, is that, like, what every single person who spends time in a meaningful way in Washington, whether you end up disagreeing with them on 90% or agreeing with them on 90%, I'm talking about well-meaning people, um, is, it is incredibly hard to do more than one thing. Mm -hmm. Like, and that is not, uh, that isn't corruption, that is the that is the manner in which it works. Um, and, and being able to successfully do more than one or two things is, and is uh, debilitating, right? And then you lose your way with the first thing, part of that's the way the press covers things. Bill Clinton couldn't get whatever it was done because he did gays in the military first, like, well, I don't know. You got to. You're the White House, right? I I would think you read. You're mm -hmm. like, do them both. What's the problem? What's mm -hmm. what? But you can't. And and that I think you can. Well, no, I, there I, is a limit, though. I, I agree with you. There's a limit. The question is, you know, we're arguing and, over what and, the and limit is. And it is very hard. And in in the in the in and it's always been hard. And it is particularly hard in the Trump world when he dominates the news cycle completely. Right? Either with incompetence or outlandish behavior or both. Um, or corruption, that it is very hard to, that's the time, of course, when it, when it is corruption then to, to try yeah. and jump on it. Well, see, here's what nobody does, including Bernie. My colleague Mitch McConnell took, you know, let's now make up a hypothetical here, but you can fill in the blank with Mitch McConnell with any industry on any legislation. Right? My colleague Mitch McConnell took $285,000 from the oil companies and, and voted to give them subsidies. That is uh, robbing the American people of their hard-earned tax dollars because he is corrupt and bought off by the oil companies. Right, and to that I would say, and I'm gonna agree with you, so I would say that that some people I'm certain would say, well then they'll hit Bernie on his, you know. You know, he Bernie Sanders got $27 from Sally in <laughs> Kansas. Right. And and that is why he's trying to get her health care. Right, but they'll say the thing, <laughs> they'll, they'll talk about Bernie and guns and they'll talk about uh, uh, Bernie and you know they'll twist it and be you know. Of you know, course they three will. I know. Right, like but, I'll use the Mankiewicz rule. You know what you right. said. Well, gonna, I was about 17. to say it anyway. So go yeah, ahead, yeah, right. Yeah, then you get to say something else. Yeah. Well, also they're gonna say it <laughs> anyway. anyway. Right. right. So yeah. like just so, so say your thing. No, yeah, it's make they, your they're case. not doing it because it feels impolite. Yeah, that may be. I, that, that, That's why you need an outsider, which gets me. And back of course, to my because opinion. right, if you say Mitch McConnell did this, took this two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars, so did Joe Manchin, and I don't just mean to call out a, a conservative Democrat. So did uh, you know? I'll make I'll make someone. Chris Coons. Who, Chris Coons yeah. takes money left and right from the insurance industry in Delaware, the banking industry in Delaware. Chris Coons is not a bad guy. He's not evil. He's not any of those things. And he votes the right way in a lot of instances, but does the money he takes from the drug companies and the bankers uh, influence his vote? Definitely, is that corruption? Definitely. Would even Bernie Sanders call Chris Coons corrupt? No way. Right, no, that's right. And so that's why, and so you can't really do it to Mitch McConnell. Exactly, exactly right, Ben. No, this show so far, let alone any show, no one said anything more right than what Ben just said, which is that, if you say it about McConnell, they're gonna say, well, doesn't your colleague Joe Manchin also take that money? So doesn't Chris Coons, your colleague, also doesn't, take doesn't that Cory money? Booker, doesn't Cory Booker, doesn't, you know, et cetera. Right. And so are you, and so that that's why all the Democrats go, uh, let's not talk about it, okay? Even the good ones. And so that is what I'm deeply frustrated by. So it's not like, hey, I'm biased in favor of Bernie Sanders or anyone, I'm biased in favor of the policies. Anyway, that's not biased, that's perspective. Okay, but let's skip back to the, so um, I'm on the ship and uh, and I, I'm sick and, and I talked about this in a post game and uh, I've got, uh, I sleep a lot, so which is great, it feels so good. <laughs> so it's, uh, we didn't have enough money for the balcony room, so we're in the tiny little internal room. Sounds like prison. Uh, yeah, but but in a good way, remember the, Yes. Old school conversation me, you and Jill Pike had about how yeah, it would be great to go to prison. Wanted to go to prison, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you could like do uh, some push ups and get some reading done. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. And not have any bills, no stress, mm -hmm. et cetera, right? <laughs> and by the way, you know, how many things can you do at once? The answer is four. I can come back and explain that later, <laughs> okay? So anyway, I'm in this cute little prison uh, that's called my cabin. 
And it and since there's no windows and you're inside of a giant ship, oh, it sounds great. It's pitch black. Oh, fantastic! Are right. you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I, and I, I, to, I, I, like took a nap, but let's. I think it was around. Were your four. kids staying in the same room? No, they're uh, staying with their uncle. And so the fact that Wendy's uh, brother came was just a godsend, right? Because uh, he took him to the pool, he took him to the arcade halftime, and and we did it. So third, we did, well, however many times he did it for any parent, you're like. Oh, thank God. Yeah, of course. Right, yeah. especially when you're sick. Yeah. So I, I took a nap at like four, and it was the deepest, most wonderful slumber of my life, <laughs> right? And and I got up at 5.30, and, but I got up at 5.30, and I could just feel the slumber. Like I was like, mm, I soaked it in, I savored the slumber, sure, okay? Yeah. And then and then I started thinking in the dark. <laughs> and, and so here's the epiphany, and then we'll uh, transition. Um, I realized, like I'm beating myself up because I keep thinking about it the wrong way. I think for a person who's going to be successful in media, politics, all the other things, I know what the steps are. Subconsciously, I know what the steps are. You're supposed to this, then you get to this stage, and then you get to this stage, and then you get to whatever is success, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever, however you define success. Uh, and I and I'm so frustrated because I don't see myself taking those steps. Again, these were not conscious thoughts, but I had I realized at that moment that that's what I was missing and why I was frustrated. Like, are we not doing the right things, right? And then I realized, no, you take those steps inside the gates. If you're outside the gates and you're a barbarian like me, you don't climb up the same ladder. There is no goddamn ladder, right? You're outside the gates. So you wouldn't go from like, you know, this and then CNN and the New York Times is writing about you and then this is happening because they write about people inside the castle. And I'm outside the castle. So it's not a conspiracy again back to our point and why I brought it up. It's just they they don't know what's outside the castle and it's not like like I don't care what the hell's going out there. That's the Netherlands. It's not the right word. Nether. Nether it's regions. another world. Well, that's, 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 that's wrong. That's, that's definitely also wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're both wrong, but <laughs> we'll stick with outside the gates. Outside the gates. <laughs> <laughs> so, definitely it's, not it's the, the Nether, Nether regions. regions. <laughs> oh no, no, that's not it at all. But let's go back to Netherlands. That was definitely better. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you're in Holland, and <laughs> and, and so I thought, who you know the, what? So who are the Dutch? <laughs> And, and so this is a little self-aggrandizing, so bear with me. But I thought maybe I got them where I want them. That like that I'm thinking about it the wrong way. That I didn't climb that ladder because I'm not climbing that ladder. Uh, if you're leading a rebellion or part of a rebellion, you're not going to go up that ladder. This is where I should be as a person involved in the rebellion. And so, and the, the cool kids have figured out a way. To conform better than other kids, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're pretending not to conform, and it's the, the example I've used a couple of times on the show, where I remember when I was a kid in the 1980s. I'm in the locker room, and there's one of the cool kids, and and in the 70s they used to pull their socks all the way up, okay, to their knees, and that was cool. Then in the 80s that became uncool because you're trying too hard by mm -hmm. pulling your socks all the way up, and you want to be cool. You don't want to try too hard. So with the and I saw one of the cool kids. He would pull his socks all the way up and then carefully roll them down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's twice the effort, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Right. And whereas I would just leave my socks wherever the f they were, mm -hmm. right? Loser. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And so if and so they have figured out a way to get societal. Confirmation and approval in a way that is more efficient, better, etc. But if you're doing that, you're not part of a rebellion. You have figured out how to conform better to societal norms. And I'm not conforming. Again, it sounds like I'm painting myself as cool. That's because I kind of am. Let's <laughs> keep it real. Uh, no, seriously, it's just to say it gave me peace of mind to realize I don't know if. I'm going to be successful, we're going to be successful in that rebellion. But if you were in that rebellion, this is where you would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Right, and for whatever reason, that gave me huge peace of mind and I went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> God, it was so dark, wonderfully dark in that cabin. All right, YouTube guys, we gotta let you go. TYT.com slash join to get the whole old school episode, get all the Young Turks shows like a progressive Netflix 
And as you can tell, we serious, we have fun. If you wanna try it out free for a week, tyt.com slash trial. Like what you see? Of course you did, it was old school. So click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks. You got a question.